Okay. Okay. Hi, I'm Doug Grove. I'm one of the authors of Multidimensional Education, Common Sense Approach to Data-Driven Thinking. If you've seen some of our videos or you've even read some of our book, uh, you know that one of the things that we set out to do is really look at improving education through seven different dimensions of education. And those seven dimensions really inform what we call the overarching four C's of school improvement. The four C's are community engagement, climate, character, and curriculum. And today I wanted to share a little piece with you about how we really believe that we need to approach curriculum. You know, we live in a standards-based environment, and that standards-based environment really requires us to kind of be focused on more direct instruction and really teaching more to the test. And a lot of people would say that that standards-based instruction oftentimes limits our creativity as teachers. And I think a lot of us really got into teaching in the first place because we really like to be creative. We uh, had teachers that we enjoyed that were creative, and we really wanted to be creative and be able to bring that to our students and bring that content to our students in a creative way. So one of the things that specifically helps us in understanding what's important about curriculum is this acronym of PERCA. And PERCA is really about pedagogy that's engaging. It's about enthusiasm about the subject matter. It's about building those relationships with, with students. It's about that knowledge that is really key and important to the subject matter. And it's about assessment that helps us know how to guide learning and also how to guide our own instruction. So when we think about pedagogy that is uh, engaging, we really have to think about ways that we can bring that content to the students that are more engaging and more interactive than just direct instruction. You know, and there's a lot of resources out there. There are a number of different models, uh, concept attainment models, synectics models, cooperative learning models. There's an awful lot of good research out there on multiple models for instruction that go above and beyond just direct instruction. And enthusiasm for the subject matter. I mean, how can you not be enthusiastic about what you're going to teach? And you know, if you're not enthusiastic, I guarantee you that your students are not going to get enthusiastic. You know, I used to have a professor when I was doing my teacher credential work, and he used to talk about, you've got to be enthusiastic about the curriculum, whether you want to or not. He used to talk about maybe having to be a little false enthusiastic. And I think that's important, because if you don't motivate those students and get them excited about what's going on that day in class, they're not going to get excited about it at all. You know what might be the, the effect of that as well? You may not have been excited about it, but maybe you actually get excited about teaching it too. Third one is relationships with students. Can't really over, over explain how important it is that we have relationships with our students. And not just relationships in the classroom between student and teacher, but that we take the time to go out and outside of, of classroom places, like the theater, like the uh, athletics uh, court, like the football field, places where our students get an opportunity to interact with us that is not in that student-teacher arena. That's important because that helps our students realize that we are not just teachers, we really are people, we can attend activities and events, and we can have fun just like they do. Another thing is knowledge about the subject matter. You know, knowledge is really paramount to you being able to bring an enthusiasm, for you being able to be uh, engaging with the pedagogy. You have to have that content matter proficiency, and you have to know what you're teaching, and you have to be ahead of the students, and I think that's imperative. A lot of times, elementary teachers, sometimes they feel a little less confident about teaching some of the upper level elementary grades, math and science. We need to make sure that we can support those teachers, we can get them up to speed in those classroom subjects, so that they have that mastery and they have that confidence. Lastly is assess assessment. You know, assessment can be a really negative word for a lot of people. But the thing about assessment is that it really provides you with the know. That you know those students have mastered that content. You know that your instruction has been effective. And that's something that you're really going to want to make sure that you have a, a grasp on. And there are a lot of good sources that really provide us good ways to create good formative assessment structures within our classrooms. You know, one of the things when we look at the seven different dimensions and we look at those four C's in our multi-dimensional approach, we don't necessarily focus specifically just on curriculum. 
we look more so at some of those other factors that are involved in the whole school improvement process. But as you know, if you can take a look at PERCA and you can apply some of those specific key points to the way you think about teaching and the way you actually implement your teaching, it can make a huge difference in how the students receive the instruction that you're giving them.